Good morning from St. Stephen's United Methodist Church. This is Pastor Roland, and I'm so grateful that you're joining us via live stream this morning. Uh, in light of all of what's happening in our nation in the course of this week, I just want to share a portion of a letter that our bishop sent to all of us, and you can find that on our Facebook page as well uh, in its entirety. But uh, it just reminds us of what we believe in terms of uh, being United Methodist in the midst of this difficult time uh, in some of the relationships that we're sharing as a people in this great nation. In 2016, the General Conference passed a resolution that I have reproduced below. The resolution was recently included in a letter from the Council of Bishops. It is a reminder of what we believe and a call for us to commit to act on our beliefs. And this is that excerpt this morning. Because we believe that God is the creator of all people and all are God's children in one family, that racism is a rejection of the teaching of Jesus Christ, that racism denies the redemption and re reconciliation of Jesus Christ, that racism robs all of humanity, beings of the wholeness, and is used as a justification for social, economic, and environmental and political exploitation that we must declare before God and before one another that we have sinned against our sisters and brothers of other races in thought and word and in deed, that our common humanity is in creation. All women and men are made in God's image, and all persons are equally valuable in God's sight, that our strength lies in our common humanity in creation, that our strength lies in our racial and cultural diversity, and that we must work toward, the, toward a world in which each person's value is respected and nurtured, that our struggle for justice must be based on new attitudes, new understandings, and new relationships, and must be reflected in laws, policies, structures, and practices of both church and state. Therefore, we commit ourselves as individuals and as a community to follow Jesus Christ in word and in deed and to struggle for the rights and self-determination of every person and groups of persons. Let us not be deceived by raceless propaganda. It is not of God. Instead, let us follow Jesus Christ. And that's signed James Nunn, our bishop. And I appreciate that letter so much in light of all of what's happening in the country around us that we need to remember that we are created in the very image of God and that we're all created in the image of God and that God loves each one of us dearly and that we need to love in a special way in this time, that we need to find ways to show and appreciate our love for people of different cultures and different races, that we are all God's children and that we have to love and care for one another. I'm praying that God will send revival on our land, that we can experience the fullness of God's love in amazing ways, and that we can open our hearts to new possibilities of loving people for who they are, God's creation. This is Pentecost Sunday, and it's an amazing Sunday to celebrate that reality because God poured out his spirit on all, not just a few, not some, but all people. And we need to remember that in a special way today as we enter into worship. I know that it grieves God's heart when we don't understand and we don't love one another as he loves us. And that God wants us to be about the work of sharing the good news of the kingdom and sharing the good news of Jesus' reconciliation. That he reconciles us to God and that we need to reconcile ourselves to one another. That's just what I believe in hope that we can accomplish as a church together moving forward in light of all of what's happening in our nation. We'll continue to pray for our nation and let us go to the Lord in prayer as we begin this worship service. Oh gracious and loving Lord, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for the gift of your son Jesus Christ. We thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit that we celebrate on this Pentecost Sunday that fills us with your love it empowers us to love others as we love ourselves. Lord, we realize that's the greatest commandment. Help us to live that out in everything that we are about. Lord, we thank you for that, and we thank you for that in the life of St. Stephen's United Methodist Church. Lord, that we would love 
unconditionally and absolutely and perfectly through the gift of your Spirit this day. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful gathered here out of love for you and at home as we celebrate together your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'd invite you to join us in our opening praise. Come, Holy Spirit, inspire our hearts with your fiery presence. Let, Let your, your flame burn within, within us, us, stirring, stirring us, us to action. action. Come, Holy Spirit, energize our lives to work for God. Let, Let your, your wind of hope swirl around us, lifting and moving us from complacency. complacency. Come, Holy Spirit, pour your blessing on us. Let, Let your, your presence, presence challenge us to, to proclaim God's presence and love in everything we say and do. Amen. Amen.
Good morning, boys and girls. I've got something here, and you should have one of these at home, too, because we mailed those to you during the course of this week. And what is this? It's a little pinwheel, isn't it? So if you blow on that gently, what's going to happen? Reminds us of what? That there's something there. You can't see uh, the breeze that my breath is creating in this sanctuary, but we can sense it and see it with this, can't we? So I hope that you remember that uh, during this Pentecost Sunday that we're celebrating the coming of the Holy Spirit. Pentecost Sunday is really the birthday of the church because that's when people became, be started to become Christians. That's when the Holy Spirit poured out its power, God's power, on Peter, and he preached the first sermon, and so many folks came to know Jesus and be started to follow Jesus and to walk after Jesus. So the Spirit is signified by what? A mighty wind. That's what happened at Pentecost Sunday. But it's also signified by a flame. And it seems like an appropriate thing to do today to light a candle because since it's kind of the birthday of the church, what do you do on uh, birthday days? You light a candle, don't you? On the cake generally, but you light a candle. So let's do that this morning as well as we think about how the Holy Spirit works and moves in the church. The Holy Spirit is wind, and the Holy Spirit is flame. Wind and flame are important for us to remember on this Pentecost Sunday. We remember these things. We remember that the Holy Spirit moves in the wind. We remember that the Holy Spirit allows us to have the flame, which does what? It helps to purify us. It helps us to do the right thing and to love people more fully and more completely. It empowers us and equips us to be what? God's children. So if you didn't receive one of these this week, call into the church or whatever, and we will make sure that you get one of these. If you're a child in the life of our church, uh, we don't have enough for every adult, but we've got enough for all of the kids. So if you didn't get one of these by mistake, we'd love to have you on the mailing list where you can get all of the information that we're doing 
uh, remotely for uh, Sunday school. Uh, but remember that the Holy Spirit is wind and fire. So we think about that today. Good morning. This is the time in our service that we share our joys and concerns of our church family. And today these also include the joys and concerns from last Sunday, which we were not able to announce then. Uh, the joys listed today, Carlin Benford's daughter and son-in-law, Shannon and Mike McKinney, will celebrate their first wedding anniversary this week. Of course, that was now last week. So uh, happy anniversary to Shannon and Mike on their first year anniversary. And Larry Register, as you know, was in the hospital having a stent put in a couple of weeks ago. And Larry would like to say thank you to everyone for all the cards, phone calls, food, and prayers while I was in the hospital. You are so greatly appreciated and motivating to get and keep me going. You are such a blessing to me and my family. Love you every day. Larry, we're so glad that you've recovered and you're doing well. And Amy Givens, uh, Cindy Slavin's granddaughter, uh, celebrated her seventh birthday recently. Happy birthday, Amy. And Jarrett Stites has been accepted to NSU and will start at the Broken Arrow campus in the fall. So congratulations, Jarrett. And I know your mom and dad are happy about that too. Uh, Linda and Marion McFadden will celebrate their 63rd wedding anniversary on June 2nd. Happy anniversary, Linda and Marion. And Harriet and Bill Schmies uh, celebrated their 61st wedding anniversary on May 29th, so congratulations to them as well. And another joy is that we have a break in the rain uh, and sunshine for this beautiful weekend. The concerns that are listed uh, for this week, David Lawless, had his second heart ablation last Wednesday. It went well, but it will be several weeks before they know if it was successful. So David will be praying for you that you do have a successful um, surgery this time. Anne Green's sister, Dolores Henson Zielstroff, passed away on May 23rd after a long illness. A balloon send-off will be done soon and a memorial service will be held later. So please keep Dolores' daughter, Hannah, in your prayers, and let's also keep Anne in our prayers on the loss of her sister. Uh, Justin Groff's sister-in-law, Alyssa, died unexpectedly on May 25th. Justin is Karen Bissell's son, so let's keep that family in our prayers as well. And finally, Mike Mullman, has been diagnosed with malignant esophageal cancer and we'll see an oncologist next week. So Mike, we will be praying for you and your family as you go through this treatment and pray that it will be successful for you. These are the joys and concerns today. Let's lift them up to the Lord. Let's quieten our spirits as we go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Oh, gracious and loving Lord, we thank you for your presence uh, with us as a people. Even though we can't be together physically, we're together in spirit. We thank you for this Pentecost Sunday when your spirit is celebrated and we celebrate the reality of what your Holy Spirit does for us, that he helps us to understand fully what your purpose and mission is for our lives. Lord, we thank you and praise you for this day that you've given us, and we pray for our nation. We pray that you would give us uh, peace. Lord, that you would remind us and strengthen us that we could be about the work of your kingdom, that we could truly love our brothers and sisters in Christ. Lord, that you have created us in the image of God and that we are valuable in your sight. Lord, help us not to diminish that reality with hate or fear or uh, misunderstanding in our hearts, but help us to live life in love. Help us to truly be the church. Help us to be the body of Christ in this community and throughout this United States and throughout the whole world. 
Lord, we thank you and praise you for that possibility this day. We thank you and praise you for your goodness and for your mercy and for your great grace. We thank you for the amazing gifts that you give us, the gift of life and the gift of new life in your son, Christ Jesus. And we thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit that we celebrate on this Pentecost Sunday. We thank you that the Holy Spirit is present with us uh, to reveal Jesus to our lives and to our hearts and to our minds. And Lord, we thank you and praise you that as we experience the risen Christ in our lives through the grace and power of your Holy Spirit, that we could remember that you are indeed the great physician, the one who heals us. We pray that you would be with all of those that need your healing presence this day. We realize and acknowledge that you're greater than any disease. You're greater than cancer. You're greater than any disease that would come against us in the midst of life. And we thank you that your healing presence would be released in the lives of all of those that need that touch. We also gratefully acknowledge today that your Holy Spirit is the comforter, the one called alongside us to be our helper. And we pray for those that have lost loved ones in these recent days. Lord, that you would be with them to comfort and to strengthen and encourage as only you can. Lord, we thank you and praise you for the reality that this is not our permanent dwelling place, but that we're simply sojourners in this world and that you have created us with eternal spirits and that we can be in your presence even after death here because we realize that Jesus has conquered that on our behalf. And we realize that we can trust and know and understand completely within our hearts and within our spirits that we live eternally with you as we've committed our hearts to follow you and your kingdom. Lord, we thank you and praise you for your goodness this day. We thank you for all that you're doing and all that you want to do in and through the life of the church. Continue to help us be guided and directed by the wonder of your Holy Spirit. Help us to get caught off in all of that uh, wind. Help us to be carried along in joy and in wonder as we're about the work of your kingdom this day. Lord, we thank you and praise you for being with us as a people and as a nation. We pray that you would provide for each of us peace that passes all understanding, that you would guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. We pray for the leadership of our nation, and we just pray that your spirit would pervade the hearts of all those that would govern and lead us. Lord, we thank you for this day and for the opportunity to be able to uh, lift our country before you and into your very throne room of grace. Lord, we thank you for being present with all of us as a people together. Help us to realize more fully and more completely that we're better when we're together in that process. Lord, we thank you for all that you're doing and all that you want to do in and through each one of us this day. Open our hearts to the possibility of receiving from your word and understanding more fully and more completely in our hearts that we're loved by you and that we can love our neighbor as we love ourselves. Lord, we thank you for this day that you've given us. We thank you for this time of being able to be present with you. We pray that we would feel and sense your presence as the Holy Spirit fills us with your love this day. We thank you for his revealing Jesus to us. We thank you for Jesus' willingness to come and be with us so that we could experience this eternal and abundant life. Lord, we thank you for Jesus' willingness to come to us, to teach us the way to you, to teach us even how to pray to you, as he taught us to pray these words with meaning from our hearts. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. and 
Amen. Just want to take a moment to remind you and to say thank you for your continued generosity in the midst of this time of uh, uh, doing things via social distance, and we appreciate uh, your generosity toward the church, and we're so grateful for your continued support of the church, and just want to pray over this important time in the worship service where we worship God through our giving. Let's pray together. Oh, gracious and loving Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to give our very best to you. As we give these gifts to you, we realize that uh, we give them to your kingdom, that your kingdom might come in fullness right here in this community, but around the world as well. We thank you in advance for the generosity of the hearts of the givers. Bless each in that generosity, for we know and realize fully 
deeply within our spirits that we would never be able to outgive you. You give us all the good gifts. You give us the gift of life. You give us the gift of renewed life through your Son, Jesus Christ. You give us the gift of your Holy Spirit that we celebrate on this Pentecost Sunday. You give us all the things that are good. And today we say thank you for that as we give back a portion of what you've blessed us with. And we know that we would receive again many times uh, for that process. And we're so grateful for your presence uh, with us in this time of giving. invite you to share with us in our affirmation of faith, which is the Nicene Creed this morning. We believe in one God, Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sakes he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he arose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, 
the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who was with the Father and the Son, is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, we believe in the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our scripture lessons begin with a prayer of illumination. Let us pray. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. The first reading is from Psalm 104. O oh Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The, the earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the sea, great and wide. Creeping things innumerable are there, living things both small and great. There go the ships and Leviathan that you formed to sport in it. These all look to you to give them their food in due season. When you give to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are filled with good things. When you hide your face, they are dismayed. When you take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created and you renew the face of the ground. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works, who looks on the earth and it trembles, who touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have been. May my meditation be pleasing to him, for I rejoice in the Lord. Let sinners be consumed from the earth and let the wicked be no more. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Praise the Lord. And the first New Testament reading is from uh, chapter two of Acts. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them the ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? <clears throat> Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, 
for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And the second New Testament reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says, let Jesus be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge, according to the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the one Spirit to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same spirit who allots to each one individually just as the spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit, we are all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Our gospel lesson for this morning comes from the Gospel of John chapter 7, verses 37 through 39. On the last and the greatest day of the feast, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, streams of living water will flow from within him. By this he meant the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were later to receive. Up to that time the Spirit had not been given, since Jesus had not yet been glorified. Let us pray. Lord, now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer, and we'd be quick to give you all of the praise and all of the glory. Amen. So I'm looking at this passage from the book of Acts this morning, where I'll be preaching from today. Um, it's amazing as we think about what must have been happening. There were about 120 people gathered in the upper room, probably where Jesus uh, celebrated the Passover for the last time with his disciples, and they were there uh, in unity and in prayer, and uh, they were awaiting the gift of the Holy Spirit. They had uh, no idea what that would entail. But here it comes, and it says, When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. And suddenly a sound like a blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. And they saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. Can you imagine the scene? Their surprise, certainly. 
Have you ever been surprised by the wind? I've been surprised by the wind on a couple of occasions. One time when I was a young boy, we had gone to Traverse City, Michigan, one of the most beautiful places in the world, in my opinion. It's just a glorious place, and we went over there to pick cherries for the family. It was just a family day away, and we did some things and picked cherries, and then we always got to go to the lake. And that year, I remember talking my dad into taking the little fishing boat, and we had a little aluminum fishing boat, about a 12-footer in that process, and uh, to take it out on what was called Round Lake then. I've noticed that as I've looked at Google Earth to think about that, that's a different name, it's called Lake Skagmore now, and I don't know why the change happened, but it was at Round Lake and it was beautiful. You, you can imagine the wonder of that moment. The sky was blue, there wasn't a cloud in it. It was just gorgeous and completely amazing. The water was crystal clear, but yet at the same time there was a beautiful blue hue in it. It was amazing. It's like the ocean almost because the lake was so large. And the trees were green and I was ready to go fishing and we launched the boat and we got out there a little ways, not too far from shore, and then something happened. All of a sudden, it was a surprise to everyone. The wind just really picked up. And I mean, it picked up in a hurry and it picked up hard. And as that wind was blowing and continuing to blow, the waves got a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger, and then my dad started getting a little bit worried, I could tell. He said, we're going to have to go in. He hated to disappoint us because I lived for fishing. I lived for those moments like that, and I was thinking, but I wasn't so concerned about going in because I remember my dad faced the boat into the waves, and as we were going over the waves, I could see the little Johnson outboard motor, and I could see the propeller spinning as we went over the waves. That was a scary moment in that process. We were what? Surprised. The disciples were surprised as well, I think, when the Holy Spirit descended upon them and filled them with power and with grace and with all that was needed. Think about what's happening in today's scripture. There is the wind that's blowing in the life of the church uh, when it's becoming the church. There was no church at that moment. There were 120 faithful people gathered in the upper room, and then the Holy Spirit descends, and what happens? The first sermon is preached. The Holy Spirit descends on each of those individuals, and then Peter gets up and begins to preach in that process. And first they receive the gift of the Spirit, and they're all together in that place. And what, a, what do they do? They begin to speak in various languages, and the language of all of the people that were present there. And I love this passage because it reminds us that God is not a favorite haver. That God, God loves all of humanity. That God loves every person in every way. And that's the good news that we share today in the midst of all of what's happening in our society. I think as well that God is not a respecter of persons. That God loves us all. And he poured out his Holy Spirit on all those persons that were there. And the they begin to speak in unknown languages without the, any help in that process other than the gift of the Spirit. And every person that was gathered in that community began to hear them. And then there was a few skeptics that came and says, oh, these guys must be drunk. And then what happens? No, Peter declares certainly that they're not drunk because it's what? Only 9 o'clock in the morning. It's only 9 o'clock in the morning and he got up with the 11 and they stood together and he raised his voice and he addressed the crowd fellow jews and all of you who live in jerusalem let me explain this to you listen carefully to what i say these men are not drunk as you suppose it is only nine in the morning no this is what was spoken by the prophet joel he goes on to quote joel from the old testament in the last days god says i will pour out my spirit on all people I love that verse. That verse is central to what we have to be about in the course of these ensuing days and weeks and years. That God has called us to realize that we are one in God's spirit. That we have to love one another completely and absolutely, and that means that we have to find ways to forgive and to let go and to move forward in the life of the spirit. That we need to find ways to find healing as a people and as a nation and that we need to find ways to realize what is really important in the midst of life. And that is one thing, to know and experience the gift of Jesus Christ in our hearts and in our lives together. And as we do that, then we can also be liberated to what? Love others. Because Jesus' teaching is so clear on this issue that Jesus taught so completely and so absolutely that the greatest commandment of all is to what? Love the Lord your God with all of your heart with all of your mind, with 
all of your strength and to love what your neighbor as yourself. When Jesus was living, he went on to clarify that so clearly with one of the most wonderful parables in the life of the Scripture, the parable of the Good Samaritan. So who is your neighbor? And as we read through that story and as we read through that teaching of Jesus, we come to understand fully and completely that everyone is our neighbor, that we need one another, that we cannot do this apart from one another. We're the best when we're working together. And that's what we have to be about doing to solve the problems of this great nation, that we can't do that apart from the spirit and wonder of God. My prayer for us as a people is that God's Holy Spirit would fill us again and surprise us, take us by surprise in the midst of our lives. That God's Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit of God would come and fill us to overflowing because it's in that process that we come to know and understand and to love one another more fully. I'll tell a story of what happened to me one time when I was experiencing more of the fullness of God in my life. I had come to Tulsa and was at ORU studying to be a doctor. That's what I wanted to do. And my older sister was already in medical school, and I thought I could do that with her. That'd be just an amazing thing. But then as I'm there, I'm discovering more and more about the nature and character of God. And we were at a retreat at our brother's sister wing, and it was just an enjoyable time together. But in that time, I felt in a new and in a fresh way the working and moving of God's Holy Spirit in my life. And immediately upon realizing that God's Spirit was working and moving in my life, I realized there's things in my life that are not right. I felt the conviction of God, and I knew that I needed to change. My brother had a kind of a crush on a girl in the sister wing, and there was another guy on our brother wing that kind of uh, stole her, kind of right out from underneath him, and I was angry at that person. And then I realized in that moment that I needed to let go of that. It was the Spirit of God that brought me to a place where I could let go and receive forgiveness and extend forgiveness. And that was one of the most powerful moments in the transformation of who I was as a person to realize that God can help you change your inner heart. I love King David from the Old Testament. King David, although he was a broken man and he did some things that were incredibly wicked, was called a a man after God's own heart. That's how he's described in the Old Testament. And why is that? I think it's because David always knew that the Spirit could search him and know him. And as the Spirit knew him, he had the power to what? Change and become who God wanted him to be. And I think that's the wonder of Pentecost Sunday today. It's the Holy Spirit that seeks and searches through our hearts to allow us to let go of those things that would keep us from being all that we are, to let go of envy and jealousy and the brokenness of this world, to remind us that it's not about what we accomplish really in this world at all that really matters. It's all about what we do for the kingdom of God that is important and significant. If we want to have lasting value, do something for a lasting kingdom. Governments come and go, nations rise and fall, but the kingdom of God continues to move forward as we do that. And how does the kingdom of God move forward? The kingdom of God moves forward in individual hearts, one person at a time. When the Holy Spirit descends upon us and reminds us and convicts us and helps us to understand our brokenness and also our goodness, that we were created in the beginning in the image of God, and I think that we need to start there always and that we're all created in the image of God. We're very different individuals in the life of the world, and I know that God loves diversity because he created so many different kinds of people and so many different colors of people and so many different people, but he loves them all, and he loves them equally, that he cares about every human being on this planet that he's made because he's made them. And we should respect and appreciate and love others as well because we know that we're loved by God. And when we're set free by God's love in our hearts, we can love others in that light. That's my hope for our country. That's my hope for the world today is that we would lay hold of that in a new and substantial way. That we would not fear the Holy Spirit. I have to admit, when I was out there on that lake and I could see that propeller spinning, there was a little bit of fear in my heart. It was scary. And you know what? Really, when we're really honest about it, when the Holy Spirit 
begins to work and move in our lives, sometimes it's a little bit scary, isn't it? Sometimes it's just a little bit scary, but God would remind us that he loves us always in that journey and that he redeems us. Think about the preacher for today as we look at what he preaches in the last days. He says, God will pour out his spirit on all people. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. We can dream big dreams for our nation. Others have done it in the past. We can dream big dreams for who we are and what God wants us to be because God wants us to be Christian in our heart. God wants us to be loving in our heart. God wants us to be accepting of others and care for others and be realizing that in the midst of life that God poured out his Holy Spirit on all people. Not just us, not just me, not just you, but all people in that God cares for us. And if that spirit would dwell in us completely and absolutely, we can change our attitudes in our heart and our spirit spirit about what we believe and what we think and how we relate to one another. We can know that there's an eternal kingdom that we work for, not for just this worldly kingdom, that we can work for God's sake and for the sake of what God is doing in us and through us, and that is to, to reveal Jesus' love for all of mankind, to remind us that we are broken, yes, but that we're first created in the image of God. I think that King David understood that so well when he said that, uh, Lord, search me and know me. Search me and know me. Sometimes I think we just need to take stock in our lives and say, God, search me and know me. Is there a wicked thought in my life? Do I look down on other people because they're not of the same persuasion as me? Do I judge others instead of loving them into the kingdom of God? Search me and know me. Know my innermost thoughts. Know when I sit down and when I rise up. Because we know that God does, but we oftentimes need to give the Spirit permission to come and fill us and to convict us and to help us to realize that it's with the power of the Spirit that we have the ability to change our attitudes and our lives together. Apart from that, I don't have much hope for the world, really, in that journey, because I think that we might know what's right, but it's very difficult to do what's right apart from God's help. And that's what John Wesley taught when he taught us and thought, helped us to realize that it's the Holy Spirit or God's grace working in us that brings us to what? A point of being able to be sanctified, to be made different, that God sees us as whole when we accept and embrace God, but that we have to become all of how God sees us in the world. And that is when we live it out, loving one another. That we have to love one another completely and absolutely and unconditionally. That we're called to that end and to that purpose. That we have to forgive. That we have to let go of what we want to hold on to sometimes. To give God the room to work in all of our lives together got great hope for all of us as a church and as a nation and as a people because I believe that the Holy Spirit wants to fill us again. Spend time seeking the gift of God's Holy Spirit in your life. It'll empower you. The Holy Spirit will empower you to become all of what God made you to be. That's really what I believe today in the name of the Father and of the Son and especially of that precious Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen.
Let us pray. O gracious and loving Lord, we ask that you would send us forth in the power of your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we pray that you would fill us to overflowing with your love, with the love of God, that we could love our neighbors as we love ourselves. Help us to be able to live life in that light, and we would know and believe and trust and realize that all the rest would take care of itself. Lord, we thank you today that as we go forth from here, we could find tangible, concrete ways to express your love to the world around us. Help us to do that in the power of your Spirit this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.